Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you. And today we're going to be taking a look at a selection of the new, uh, I suppose we're going to call them the X-rated fans, but I'm calling them the performance fans. And it does say performance RGV fan on the back, but it's the new performance fans from NZXT. Um, and they are a ground up new design. Um, it initially looked like they had uh, just turned the RPM up uh, and it really is not like that at all these are actually quite mad um so you get on the three on the 120 based one so there is uh, an all-in-one so one fan 360 they do do a 240 and then they do do 120 as well same with the uh 140 based ones there's an individual there's a dual and there's a triple um but the first thing i say if you pick up a normal fan it's just, it's a fan, it's plastic, it's light, it's not particularly heavy. These fans, honestly, it's like having two fans in your hands at once. They are so sturdy and rigid. First of all, it isn't a 25 millimeter fan, it is a 30 millimeter thick fan. So they are that little bit extra thick. There's metal bracing around the side of uh, all of them as well and obviously with the 360 it's a much longer part the lighting is less than I would have expected from NZXT you do just have little modules around the outside um, it is front and back though uh, so I think personally that the lighting is less because they focused on the rigidity and the performance it's almost like a token gesture but it is quite understated and I did quite like it as well. Now, there is an awful lot for us to go over with these. The performance numbers are quite mad. Um, so the, you've got 3,100 for all of the 120 models with 104 CFM and 7.53 um, mm H2O static pressure. But then with the 140s, they're only, only, 2400 rpm but the airflow is 116 static pressure's a little bit lower though with 5.78 mm h2o um, and then it effectively the, the specs that they give you for the 240 the 280 the 360 the 420 are all per fan anyway so they don't change at all i can show you the big technical specifications graph that you can pause and pick about um, one of the things we do need to say is the prices now it does get weirdly cheaper if you buy the like 360 over three 120s because it's 40 pounds all bar a penny for a single fan so i'm expecting great things now what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you some um uh, noise performance first it's the first time i've done it in the video and if i'm honest i'm still not entirely sure about my noise meter uh because i just normally use this at the workshop for uh, measuring exhaust noises before we go and do track um but we'll show you some noise performance and then i will come back to talk to you about thermal performance because i have some information for you on these that is definitely going to surprise you So at the start of each uh, power up, you'll get a brief burst of full speed and it will fall back to a quiet mode. I've currently got them set to uh, silent. Uh, and as you can see, when I be quiet, the um, meter will go back to 38.8, which is uh, the lowest I've been able to get my meter to read in a normal day at home. What I'm gonna do now is set all the fans to 100% just so that you can uh, hear them wind up. This is the CPU fans. Front fans. Bottom fans.
Now with the noise performance, obviously, that is a full system, but you can hear it step up. It's, uh, I could do just a single fan, but then you're not going to use it as just a single fan. You're always gonna have it attached to a heat sink, going through some mesh on the back of a case, going through an AIO. Um, so that's why I've done the whole system so that you can hear the difference between them. Now, performance. I tested uh, it with all the normal standard fans, although I did swap them all out for the 280, 360, and the only thing NZXT forgot to send me was a standard 120 rear, so I ran without it. That's why it's not here. Yes, I could have fit the performance one, but then it would have been an unbalanced test. So this is not something I would normally do, but for today, we've just done the best that we could. So. With the normal fans in there, we did our runs. I did a 1,000 RPM run, just because it's a nice normal one. But the other weird thing that I had to do was fix the graphics card uh, fan RPM. Because otherwise, if I don't fix it to a certain RPM, when the 240, the, yeah, sorry, the 280 in the bottom is whizzing away, the, fan, the graphics card fan actually slows itself down because the 280 is doing the work for it. So the lowest I could set my graphics card to was a 30%. So that's just so you know, that was fixed the entire time. And then the only other numbers that changed in the case were the fan speeds. And we did a thousand RPM run for both. And then we did a max RPM run for both. And the results were quite surprising because I was not prepared for how much better the performance fans beat the normal fans at a thousand RPM. The results for the um, 360X on the CPU were on par with the standard 360 fan at 2400 RPM. Or was it 2000 RPM? I think it was 2000 RPM. It was quite eye-opening, uh, the performance difference. So look at the graph, you can see the tie in between. So what it's led me to believe, and not believe, but the results speak for themselves, is I thought these were just going to be crazy numbers at crazy RPMs. But they actually perform really well at decent RPMs as well. And then you've still got the ability to turn them right up if you need to. And that was something I wasn't prepared because I genuinely thought these were just going to be about having to run them at 100% all the time. And you really don't. You could genuinely buy these fans and have it set up on a curve. And you can also see with the noise results that we've done, as you've seen, that at idle, it was really, really quiet. There wasn't, most of the time that graph was pinging up to 42, is because there was a seagull flying around outside and I could hear it and then the meter was picking it up as well. When I tested in the evening, when it was obviously a bit quieter and there was also no wind because it has been really windy on the filming day, um, it just sat at 38.8 the entire time at 1000 RPM with all of the fans running. And you could turn the rig off and it stayed there. So it could be this isn't that accurate lower down, but if I'm completely honest, the amount of noise it does make at 1000 RPM is minuscule anyway. And I think the GPU results, when you talk about the fact that we have a 280 in the bottom blowing up a static 30% um, fan on a graphics card and the test results were that low, I think that's unbelievable. And I was literally leaving F1 2025 maxed out on loop for like an hour and a half. And the reason why the results look a little bit lower is because they're delta temperatures. So we've taken the ambient temperature of the room. So some type they range between sort of like 20 to 23 degrees for the ambient temperature in the room. We should have the, ambi the, the ambient temperature in the graph so that you can see the difference. But nevertheless, the performance numbers were outstanding. Now they are not cheap. But obviously you need to remember that with the 360, for example, that is three fans. But if you were to kit this um, uh, case out, you are looking at 200, 280, 320 pounds. If you put the rear 120 in, 320 pounds just on fans. Which is an awfully, 
high amount of money, especially in the um, current climate. But with the fact that you get high-end performance edition fans that you can run quietly on your desk that aren't going to annoy everyone in your house, but if you live in a hot country or want to do a bit of overclocking or you just want to eke out that last bit of performance out of your rig without any thermal problems, it's really hard not to like them. And I genuinely think NZXT have pulled an absolute blinder on these and I genuinely think these are fans to watch. They're so good, it makes me want to go and test a load of other fans to see how good they are. And by that, I mean so that we can show how much better they are. And I have done um, fan testing with the likes of uh, the Be Quiet Performance ones in the past and uh, Corsair and Cooler Master. And I think we need a proper roundup now, but I do think these are going to be incredibly strong, mainly based on the fact that they aren't just about bleeding edge and they will give you a performance increase at low RPMs as well. And that's why I think they deserve the OC3D Performance Award and fair play to NZXT. But for now at least, don't forget you can go and check more results over on the website. Go and see loads of other news and articles, reviews on the website as well. Please remember to like, subscribe, comment and do all those funky monkey things and today I think we all deserve, if you got to the end, because I haven't done this for a while, we're going to have a cherry bakewell and a cup of tea together. Uh, and thank you very much for tuning in. Tiny Tom Logan out.